Hey, what's up guys? So we're two months out from the release of iOS 12 and the new iPhones, and only today we received a leak that made everything fall into place for me. Everything makes sense now about the 2018 iPhone lineup. And here's that photo. So this basically confirms the entire 2018 iPhone lineup, and most importantly, it confirms details about the 6.1 inch that were rumored way earlier, but now we know are true. So this is a leak very similar to last year's iPhone 10. It could be either a top layer of the glass of the actual display components, or it could be a screen protector. And we had the very same leak last year turn out to be entirely true. So that's why I give this rumor some credence. Anyways, taking a look at that 6.1 inch, we can tell that it's gonna have an all screen display. So there's gonna be no chin area on the bottom. It will be an LCD. And because of some new technology, Apple is able to do this with an LCD display. And it's even possible with some other displays, but not to this extent, apparently. Uh, Apple has some new tech with that. It also does confirm that this new 6.1 inch budget end model will have face ID as in the actual notch we can see that there are some inserts the very same ones as the other models for face ID but most importantly the iPhone 10 5.8 and the iPhone 10 plus 6.5 inch the ones on the outer edges they do have a thinner bezel so we heard a rumor way earlier I mean way back in like March that the bezels would be shrinking and now we can see that this is going to be the case and lucky for us we rendered that up and my idea was that the you know 6.1 inch would not be getting the same treatment because it is a budget end model and it's an LCD so it's not likely that Apple will have such thin borders around the edges and you know our prediction came true so this is what it's going to be like the iPhone 10 and 10 plus will have a whole nother distinction just based on how thin the bezels are how futuristic it'll look in your hand while the regular 6.1 will have last year's technology with the display but not even the OLED display with LCD so that made me very very excited your phones are going to look even more futuristic this year thanks to that reduction in bezel on the edges. It's not likely to actually give you any more, you know, content size or anything like that. It's just going to make your phone look sleeker. And even though the notch is still up there, it's just all around a very great change. And I didn't think Apple would be doing that this year. So this leak does confirm that your iPhones are going to be looking even more futuristic and the 6.1 inch will basically be remaining looking the same as the iPhone 10 of 2017. And Vanya Geskin did create some mockups for us to give us a better idea of how that'll look and you know based on the image that leaked he added some color in there it doesn't look like a massive difference but it certainly is there and i doubt you'll notice it just holding the phone in your hands but who knows you may and digitimes is reporting that in order to make this display technology possible with the 6.1 inch iphone apple actually had to go and make an entirely new lcd display controller chip that's uh, spec 0.3t versus the older 0.4t chips so all it does is basically allows you to bring the display closer to the borders and having less bezel that of course is always possible on an OLED, but on an LCD, it's definitely an unexplored territory. And just a thought guys, the 6.1 inch, I really don't think it'll have 3D touch. And that's because we heard about this device way, way earlier in the year, even last year. And almost everything we've heard about it has been proven to be true either by multiple sources or by these actual leaks. So the fact that it won't have 3D touch, the rumor, it's just probably going to be true as well because it started with the other rumors around this device. And Digitimes is reporting that LG will be producing producing LCD and organic LED displays for this year's iPhones. So a moment of silence for the lottery winners, the people that are gonna lose the lottery and get a display that might have more grain and better chance of burn-in on the iPhones. And not only is that gonna be on certain OLED models, the 6.1 inch as well. So hopefully they follow Apple's quality control standard and they're able to fix any issues they had in the past, but you know they don't have a very good track record of that. And I still want a Samsung-based display. And from a Dutch blog, here's some beautiful renders of the iPhone 9 right next to the iPhone 10. So it gives us a little size perspective here. They actually put it on a mat with measurements. So kind of cool, just liked how they looked and they're calling it the iPhone 9. Can you guys believe we still don't know what it'll be called? We're two months out and you know, basically Vanya Geskin points out that we do not know the official naming. If I were to guess, and you know, we did hear a rumor earlier that it would be the iPhone, just the iPhone, that would be the 6.1 inch. The iPhone 10 5.8 would just be called iPhone 10. Maybe the new iPhone 10 and the iPhone 10 plus or the new iPhone 10 plus. But uh, we didn't know the iPhone 10 name either. It was rumored. Some people speculated that it'd be called the iPhone 10, but we didn't really know. So there's really nothing we can do about that. And we'll find out in exactly two months. And there's a new report saying that Apple is sitting on such a massive inventory of unsold iPhone 10 models, three times the amount of what they've already sold. And this could be a very bad thing going forward. That's why Apple is rethinking the strategy with the cheaper end $700 
iPhone. They just weren't able to sell as many as they need. It's also possible that they're stocking up on actual components because the report does point out that it's unknown if this is entirely assembled devices or just all of the manufacturing components needed to build them and Apple is gonna be reusing them for this year's iPhones. This basically confirms that yes, Apple needs a new strategy with the iPhone 10s. They need to lower the prices, make it more affordable, and that's exactly what they're gonna be doing with this year's iPhone lineup. And here's some more case renders of the iPhone 10 Plus. From the fronts, they basically took an iPhone 10 and stretched it in size as the notch has grown in size as well. But on the back, you can see the camera is just dwarfed by the size of the actual body of the iPhone 10 Plus. This is gonna be my personal iPhone, and even though it's gonna be a much larger device, the plus size again, I'm so ready for it. I'm tired of having a smaller display and all your content being shrunk, so I'm so excited for that. And I wanted to share these with you. These are beautiful visualizations of the Apple Watch Series 4 and the new iPads from 9to5Mac. The Apple Watch Series 4 in particular here looks so good. So we've heard that the screen will be growing this year. It'll be a slight redesign, and they actually imagined what that could look like with a rounded display. So it's not a full screen display, we're not there yet, but the actual display does grow in size from that rectangle and it's so aesthetically pleasing. The corners are rounded now, ties in very well with the iPhone 10 corners. You know, it's almost the same actually. And the iPad would match that as well with its rounded display, thinner bezels, whatnot. Just all around a very good and uniform look across a range of devices. So a very beautiful concept from 9to5Mac. And today Samsung announced new LPDDR5 RAM that's gonna be used in future smartphones, potentially next year's iPhone even. It's a 10 inch structure, it's 1.5 times as fast as the current RAM used in the iPhone 10, and it's definitely coming to a future product of yours. Not only is it way faster, but it has a new power saving mode that reduces the power intake by up to 30% through many strategies. Although Apple is going towards a future where they build every single internal of the iPhone by themselves, they're working on the power management chip for future iPhones, but undeniably Samsung is king of memory for the longest time already, and they're going to continue to use them until they can build a better replacement. And yesterday Apple announced 70 new emojis coming to iOS 12. They've officially confirmed that it's coming in a future software update and they've outlined which emojis they're gonna be adding. They've added a bunch of new emojis, in particular customization options for people with gray hair, with red hair, or no hair at all. Yes, there's a new balding emoji as well. And there's a lot of new emotion faces, such as a cold face, party face, and even a pleading face. And faces with hearts, there's superheroes, infinity logo, a lobster, parrot, and a peacock too. So so the guy on my deck now has something I can express him with, which is nice. Anyways, a bunch of new emojis coming. Apple's focus on emojis is unwavering as they continually march forward and add more and more to iOS. And some other news in the world of jailbreaking, Cydia is derelict, it hasn't been updated in the longest time, and it's finally being replaced by a new package installer called Cilio. So cool star seeing that, you know, really hasn't been maintained. It still doesn't even support the iPhone 10 screen. And if you actually go up into the multitasking screen, there's the old Cydia icon there. I'm sure that it just hasn't been updated in the longest time. Cilio actually seems like a pretty great replacement. On the front page, uh, there's an app store-like interface where you can see some new tweaks, new applications that have just made it to Cydia, which is awesome. It's going to be an awesome way to learn about those new things. Meanwhile, on the front page of Cydia, it hasn't been updated in years. The same applications are still sitting there. Also, sources refresh right away, packages install faster. It's a very clean white interface, you know, but still it does the job and it's going to be continually updated which is the best part. So it'll get improvements and whatnot, support more devices in the future. So I'm excited for this. It's gonna be coming in a future version of Electra. Should make it here quite soon. So I just wanna say goodbye, Cydia. It's been a great run. Just like when Installer was replaced by Cydia, Cydia is now being replaced by Cilio as uh, you know the times move on. And when your device crashes, there will also be a new safe mode page. Previously, it made fun of Apple's focus on emojis and that's why he had a big emoji there. I mean, that's the explanation I heard. And this one is a little bit more clean, more professional looking. It's got the dead Mac logo, looks pretty great. So that's gonna be coming in a future version of Electra as well. And lastly, if anyone is in the area at San Francisco, you wanna send me some new shirts because Apple just updated their Infinite Loop Store shirts and there's some pretty nice ones in there. I want that face ID look and the Animoji ones. I don't really like the HomePod ones, but I actually managed to get some when I was there a while ago. They didn't have much. Most of the styles were out of stock, but still, if anyone's in the area, I'm serious, get me one of those and I will pay you to ship it to me. Okay guys, and tomorrow the giveaway for the iPhone 10 and the AirPods, as you can see, sitting pretty right there, waiting to become yours. So I'll have more details in tomorrow's video. In any case, that's the latest news. And I'm actually glad that we learned that today about the iPhones. The 6.1 inch iPhone is still going to be budget end, but it'll look very sleek, just like the iPhone 10 in 2017. Although the new iPhone 10 and 10 Plus are
are becoming even more futuristic and I'm very, very excited. Stay tuned for iOS 12 beta 4 later today. Peace.